Hey guys, welcome back to Not From Here. I hope you guys are doing well. The night before I recorded my first episode, I was scrolling through my phone and I came across this video and it said 90% of the podcasts that start don't go past episode three. And out of the podcasts that do go past episode three, 90% of them don't go past episode 20. So if you're on episode 21, it means you're in the top 1% of podcasts. And that kind of hit when i watched the video and it kind of became like this number that was stuck in my head you have to get to episode 21 you had to get to episode 21 and we're at episode 21 so you guys are officially listening to one of the top one percent of podcasts out there it still needs a lot of work but we're getting there and with that being said usually usually when this time of the year comes holiday season things start to slow down a little bit for a lot of us people start to go on vacations uh people start to take uh, their days off if they're working throughout the year this is where a lot of people like to unwind and relax and prep themselves for the upcoming year but what does that even mean prepping prepping yourself for the coming year why is it different than the year that already passed, right? And a lot of people would say, no, if you have something to start, you should start it right now. Why, why wait till next year? But the reality is there is that kind of special feeling that comes at the end of every year that, okay, this year is going to be different. You you feel like a book has been closed or like a chapter has been opened, whatever. And you just have this feeling that you do want to do something new, that you want to improve your life. And that's a great thing, but that has to be planned, right? It has to be prepped. You can't just expect that on January 1st, the whole world is going to change because it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. So that means that this part of the year is actually a great time to prep and prepare yourself and relax and just declutter to make sure that next year is really going to be different. So in this episode, we are going to talk about how can you effectively prepare yourself for this upcoming year? How can you take actually take a break from all the stresses that you're going through and how can you change the stuff around? So taking days off isn't the same for everyone. You have a person that might have a stationary job and doesn't work out and really doesn't move much. And on his days off, something that would excite him or her would be going out on a run or exercising or working out. And then you have another person that maybe works out every single day and his job requires a lot of physical capacity or like physical strengths. And then on his day, on their day, on their day off, they would like to actually just stay back, chill and just unwind like that. So it's a perspective thing. So you start off with, and this is important, getting a piece of paper, opening, opening your notes app on your phone and writing down what do you feel is missing in your life? Like, what do you actually want to do? And some people might think that planning your day off is like taking it to the extreme and it brings more stress. But actually, if you think about it, let's say you, you said that you wanted to take tomorrow off. What were you going to do tomorrow? You were going to probably sleep in, wake up late, then ch uh, sit on your phone for a couple hours without even realizing it. And then before you know it, it's five o'clock. The day is almost uh, the day's almost over and you barely did anything and you don't feel like you actually took the day off. If anything, it was just like time wasted. I personally learned this the hard way after wasting so many off days that I really actually needed to recharge. They were all time wasted. I actually didn't do anything in those days. So open up your notes app and actually write what you want to do on your day off. And maybe that is waking up early in the morning, going for a 30 minute walk and grabbing, then grabbing a cup of coffee, maybe watching a movie, maybe it's visiting family members, maybe it's doing charity work, maybe it's just going out with your friends. And again, it's going to depend on what you feel like you need in your life, on what you feel is missing. Be like, this time I'm going to do this and write them all down. And that way you're going to wake up next day in the morning, you're going to have an actual plan. And because this plan consists of the stuff that you feel like you want to do, at the end of the day, you are going to feel better, even if it was a hectic day or even if it was like a 
slow, relaxed, and a chill day. So keep that in mind going into holiday season is plan your off days. Life already moves very fast. So taking a day off to jog down some ideas, to journal, to just rest your body is essential. But keep your phone as far away from you as possible. Because that thing will drain your mental capacity. Like let's say you want to watch a video. Don't watch it on your phone. Let's say you want to learn something that you've been wanting to, to look up for a while. Watch it on your TV or watch it on your laptop. Because it'll change from looking that one thing up to going through social media. And then going through all the negativity that's there. And it won't end well. It's just, it's going to suck you in. For me, I think that's the secret. I think just keep your phone as far away from you as possible. And do your off day like that. Another thing that I want to talk about is self-improvement this time of the year. And again, this is something that's perspective. Maybe you're not giving enough to charity. Maybe you are lacking spiritually. This is a good time to see which parts of your personality are lacking, which parts of your interactions with people aren't going as well as you want them to. This is a good time to look into those traits, to look into yourself and see how you can improve because nothing in your life is going to get better if you don't actually get better. Think about your ego when you're dealing with people. When you're interacting with them, are you saying the things that you're saying or are you doing the things that you're doing to benefit yourself or is it to add value to this person's life? Or maybe you're making a video and you're putting it out, are you making the video so you can feel better about yourself when the numbers come in, or you're doing these videos because you genuinely have a message to give to people, because you, genu you genuinely want to help others out. And there's a problem here. We think about things from a quantity perspective. We think about how much money am I going to be able to make potentially from this interaction, or how many people are, am I going to get to like this video or to share this video or how many followers am I going to get? But thinking about things like that really ties your expectations and how you're going to feel to external factors because you can never really know how much money you're going to make through this interaction potentially or you may never know how much this video is going to get, get you followers and viewers and all, or any of that. But when you think about stuff from a quality perspective, like, what's the value that I'm providing this person? What's the value that I'm actually giving these people that are watching these videos? Because now it doesn't matter how many people watch this video. What matters is how many people were able to benefit from the message. Are you saying things that are going to make you feel good? Or are you saying things that are going to make other people feel good? I'll give you one piece of advice moving into the end of this year. And that's write a mission statement. At the beginning of the year, I read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And in one of the chapters, he said, write a mission statement. You've probably seen it on almost every website. There's a spot where it says like our mission. And that's it's a little paragraph of what the company stands for, what its values and what it's here to do. And he said, write that, but make it personal. It's only about you and keep it and don't don't show it to anyone and just read it. I forgot how many times he says to read it, but I read it once a week. I read mine once a week. And what I did was I wrote my values. I wrote what I believe in, what I want to do right now and in the future. I wrote basically a message to myself. And this message I have to apply in my day-to-day -day life moving forward. It's just like a reminder. And the nice thing about it is it doesn't have to be perfect. Like my, I think the first time I wrote the mission statement because I was still so confused on what it is and I really couldn't think about stuff to write. It was maybe like three sentences. But as I was like going through the days, stuff would happen and it'd be like, okay, in this situation, I have to act like this. Let me write this in my mission statement. And I used to write it. And now I have a long paragraph that I read every Monday morning. And it's basically a summary of how I want to live my life and what are the values that I want to live my life on. And the reason for this is a lot of times you find yourself maybe going in the wrong direction. Maybe sometimes you do stuff that you regret doing that aren't really who you are. And that's very normal. When you have this mission statement, it kind of gives you that reminder that this is who you really are. This is who you want to be and act like it. And it doesn't have to be specific to anything. Like, please, write. I know it sounds like it sounds hard to do. That's how I felt. I was like, man, this is going to be hard to write. But start small. Start general, and then as time goes, 
you make adjustments and refinements because I mean we're all learning we're all realizing new stuff every single day so it is subject to change every day and when you're done just put a reminder that every whatever day you want remember to read your mission statement sometimes you're going to read it and you're not going to feel like you're reading it it's fine next week you're going to read it again and that's like one thing that I felt like helped me through hard times this year because every time something got hard I'd read my mission statement and be like, okay, this is who I am. This is who I want to be. And it just makes me refocus again on the bigger picture. I am saying all of this right now because this is going to be my last episode of the year. I mentioned that I am expanding the podcast and that means new furniture, new gear, new topics, looking for guests and just gaining new information myself. With that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing end to your year and hopefully we can start off next year very strong. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next time. Assalamu alaikum.